if during the course of settlement discussions the defense makes a settlement offer and I tell you not to accept the offer, that is my recommendation, and you turn around and say, you know what, screw it, I want to accept the offer, what happens then? Would you like to know the answer? Come join me for a walk around the lake as I share with you the answer to that question. Hi, I'm Jerry Oginski, a New York medical malpractice and personal injury attorney. You brought a medical malpractice case against a careless doctor. And now, two years later, as we are approaching trial, the defense finally starts to negotiate. Now, the demand that we have made to settle your case is not outrageous. And the defense attorney even agrees with us that our demand is actually pretty reasonable. So now, he comes back with one offer, rejected. Comes back with a second offer, rejected. Still too low. The third offer, he now has increased the offer substantially. And now I take that offer back to you and I discuss it with you. And I say, okay, here's what they have offered. And now it is my recommendation that you reject this offer. And you know what my client says to me? He says, absolutely not. I'm done. I'm finished. I want nothing more to do with this case. It's been two agonizing years. Torture. I've had to relive this case over and over and over again. And now they're playing games with us. They're nickel and diming us. And now they finally increase their offer a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more. And now I'm done with it. I want you to go back and accept their last offer. And I say, that's a mistake. And he says, why? I said, I'll tell you why. During the course of my negotiations with the defense attorney, he never told me once that there was a line in the sand that he would not go over. He never told me that they would not pay above X number of dollars. He never said that at all. Instead, he kept telling me and reassuring me that our demand was actually quite reasonable. And as of the last time we spoke, he told me that in all likelihood there was more money available. However, there was a condition. And the condition was that he needed more time to present the facts and to reconference the case with his principals in order to get additional authority to offer more money. So he needed more time, he probably needed a few more months in order to go back to his principals, to the insurance carrier, in order to represent the case to explain why your injuries are worth substantially more than what they originally believed. And you turn around and say, you know what, that's all nice and fun and well and good. However, I'm not waiting another day. I'm not waiting another week, another month. I'm not waiting months for them to get back to me to tell me that they have more money. My recommendation was, that's a mistake. You should not accept this offer. I can pretty much guarantee that they are going to offer additional money and that you will be very pleased with their offer. Instead, my client said, absolutely not. So what do I do in that instance? I'll tell you what I do. I have an ethical obligation to my client to provide him with the best legal advice I can give him. It is ultimately my client's decision on whether to reject or to accept the particular settlement offer. And if my client turns around and rejects my best legal advice, he has every right to do so. I may feel very strongly that he's making a big mistake, but ultimately it's my client's decision. It's his case. And if he turns around and says, listen, please go back to the defense and accept their final or their last offer, I have an ethical obligation to go ahead and do that. So what happened in this case? That's exactly what I did. Do I think that the defense was shocked that my client went ahead and actually accepted their last offer? Yes, I do, but those were my instructions. Those were explicit instructions from my client, and I had to honor them. You want more information about how these types of cases work in New York? I invite you to subscribe. And if you have questions about your matter that happened in New York, but you have not yet started a lawsuit and are thinking of doing so and still have questions that need to be answered, what I invite you to do is pick up the phone and call me. You can reach me at 516-487-8207 or by email at jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at oginski-law.com. That's it for today's video. I'm Jerry Oginski. Have a wonderful day.